we're live in Beshkat Hafsadu's live Facebook group. <clears throat> we're um today we're gonna be talking about a deal we just closed, made seventeen thousand in profit off of a wholesale deal. We're gonna go over the numbers, how we found it, how we analyzed it, um, just dissect the deal step by step. So hopefully that helps someone uh do deals themselves and be able to uh just copy our success and what happened here. So um hope you guys are well. We are in Best Chicago Wholesale Deals Live Facebook group. If you haven't um joined, because I try to publish this on other social media platforms now. So if you haven't joined this Facebook group, um you can join it's free. Uh there's over 180 videos of how we are flipping cash flowing houses and how you can do it too. We teach you step by step how we're doing it. Um, our goal is to help you um, partner with you on deals, uh, basically just show you everything that we're doing in our business. So hopefully one day we can partner on a deal in the future. We've been doing this full time for over 15 years. I think 15 years now, maybe close to 15 years. I don't remember. Uh, but we're live every two weeks on Monday, 5 p.m. Central um, in this Facebook group. And uh, there's over 100 and maybe 80 training videos now on how we're flipping cash flowing houses and how you can do it too. If you're in the Chicago area, you can join our bar email buyers list here, bestchicagowholesales.com forward slash buyer. And we're buying properties. And we're also, uh, you know, if you have a property that um, maybe you have it under contract or you own it, maybe it looks like a good investment deal, you can send it to us. We can look at buying it ourselves or we have a huge investors list that we can potentially wholesale to as well. This is my email here. So if you guys have any deals, send them our way. So here's the deal here that we just closed. And I'm going to make today pretty short. Um, not going to go too long today, but um, so here's the deal we just closed. Uh, made 17000 on. It was a partner who's out in Arizona. Um, I'm going to go over how we found it, how we analyzed it, how we got the contract signed, how we sold the deal, and how we can repeat this over and over again. So this deal... Um, I'm going to go into, um, the system that we use to source leads. It's, uh, called deal machine and all of our members have access to this. And it's basically, um, um, so this property here that you can search and I pull up the property address. You can see that this was a, uh, off-market deal. It's free and clear, high equity, absentee owner. So this is basically, we do we do a lot of marketing to the absentee owner list. So our partner who got the deal under contract was basically marketing to the absentee owner list and how we market to the absentee owner list. You, you can cold call the list, text the list, email the list. You can direct mail the list, send a mailer to the, send them a, a, a a mailer just indicating, hey, I want to buy your house, see if you're interested in selling your property. So there's tons of ways that you can um, contact these leads as well. So, and we hit them three ways. We hit them with a call and leave an actual voice message saying, hey, we're investors looking to buy your property. We we send a text message. We send uh, email if we have their email. So you can see here in this, um, you know, in Deal Machine here, there's uh only emails, but most of the deals will have the phone numbers as well. Um, other ways that you can, like if you guys are using Deal Machine or you are uh, looking at deals, um, let's say that you can't find the number. Other ways you can do it is another website called True People Search, which I like a lot. You, we do, we've done tons of deals um, using True People Search. And all we need is the, um, the name of the uh, owner of the property. Oh, you know what? Because this was updated recently. So the previous owner, so Shaviro Severano, that, that was the buyer. Um, so the previous owner was Michael Wilson. So that's why it's not showing the phone numbers and text because this we just closed uh, a few weeks ago on September 5th. So so Michael Wilson and, and DJ Wilson was the uh, mailing address and then they had their phone numbers and everything. And we were able to just call them, text them and see if they're interested in selling their property. And what messages are you sending? You're sending, uh, just saying, hey, we're investors are gonna buy properties in your area. Are you interested in selling, right? But let's say that you don't 
you know, sometimes there's no phone number. You can use True People Search, which is great. And then you can type their name and uh, the mailing city where they live. And then you can uh, you can find their numbers, right, their phone numbers. So you can see here, there's a lot of... Michael Wilson's a pretty, you know, common name. So sometimes if it's a really common name, you can go to True People Search and search uh, address first. And then the name second, because if you do it, if you do it the opposite, it's harder to find. So we can see all the names here of people who possibly live there, people that um, were inside the property. And then you can see if you find a match, you know, you can just click on the match and then you, typically you'll have phone numbers, uh, emails. Um, so we have landline, wireless, cell phone. So yeah, we're going to call, text, and then we have their emails. So we're going to call, text, email um, these leads. All right. So well, that's how we found the deal. We're just marketing to absentee owner list. One of our partners uh, is using, a, you know, like a, a dialing system where they're poll calling and text messaging leads and um you know, they just were interested in selling. We sent someone out to go get, analyze the deal, get pictures and everything. And um, you can see the deal here. We got it under contract at uh, like 52, sold it for 69. And it was, uh, we're going to show you how we analyzed it, right? So we have uh, the comps here, you know, the, the highest sold comps that we found in the area that were similar. Uh, we use Redfin. Um, Redfin.com, um, I think, is one of the best. It has the MLS data. Uh, so when we're comping properties, we're, we're still using Redfin.com. Even though I'm an agent, I can use the MLS. I still like Redfin better as it's, I think, it's faster, easier to find deals. And you can see we do enter the lead into our uh, CRM with the address. And in our system, we basically are just looking for um, square footage above ground and in Chicago, if you have a basement and your comps have finished basements, we need to enter the, we need to enter the square footage of the basement because we need to rehab it. So we need to figure out the estimate on the rehab costs uh, of the entire building. So including the basement, because uh, if you don't put the basement in, your offer could be like 30 grand lower, 40 grand lower. So your numbers are going to be way off. Right. And the second thing we just need is the condition. So this was a, in between like a cosmetic and a gut rehab and then you can see uh pictures here and what's going on with this deal um it's kind of like in between right like it's not so we we did part of gut rehab um here's some pictures you know it'd be faster if i just zoom in and show you the outside didn't need some work um siding roof I'm just going to go through these pictures fast so you can just get an idea of the condition of this property that we sold. So the outside, see the inside is pretty good, right? Like the, I think the inside was probably in more decent condition than the outside. So you can see the pictures here inside it's like kind of in between a cosmetic and a total rehab the basement this is the basement and need the basement needed everything the they had like a basement unit it needed to be gutted and and taken out so you can kind of get an idea of the condition of this property. It was, uh, again, first floor is more of cosmetic, second floor, and then uh, in between cosmetic and gut, and the basement needed a gut rehab. And then the outside needed pretty much uh, new roof siding. Uh, so we, we labeled it as a gut rehab in our system. And then the next thing in our system we need to do is get the comps. Um, and again, we use Redfin um, and here, we got the 
four or five highest comps. We've got some pendings that were similar. And in Chicago, you want to, you know, if you have a frame property, you don't want to use a brick comp because uh, brick properties in Chicago, especially the South side, are selling hundreds, of, sometimes $100,000 more than a frame. So I have a frame property. This is a frame property. And sometimes you guys can't tell just from looking at the uh, uh, front view of it. You see that sometimes, oh, it looks like it's a stone. But when you get to this, when you see do like a Google Street View, you can see right there, the whole side is frame framing, right? So sometimes they do put a brick face on it or a stone face. And then sometimes you got to do a Google Street View if the, you know, the owner didn't send you pictures already or or the owner didn't already tell you it's a frame. And you can see this one, you know, I can just see the side of it pretty easy. It's a frame house, not not a brick, right? And that, you know, if if I thought it was brick and I'm comping bricks, my ARV, my offer, my cash offer, everything's going to be way off, right? Like if if you're way off on your offer, then you're like, you know, you're going to be wasting a lot of time, right? So we use Redfin. Um, I simply, you go to this map here and nearby homes for sale, and it takes you to like properties within a few block radius that are active. You just need to change it to sold in the last six months. Same thing an appraiser would do. Um, and this one is a uh, single family. It's zoned. This one's actually zoned as a single family, but it's it's laid out as like a two unit. So um, I think the so this one you could have you could have um, as for the rehab. Um, I got the I got the most. The, the highest after rehab value was to 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 have it as a single family, not a multi-unit. So I did get comps for the single family. And then you see here, I got comps for multi-family. So if they wanted to leave it as a multi, they would definitely have to, you know, get all plans, permits approved for the, the zoning change from the city. And you can see like that probably even cost more money um, because you got to get architectural plans. You got to get everything changed. And then the ARV is even lower, so two sixty nine. So my strategy when marketing this to buyers was to um was to uh to uh market it as like a is probably better as a single family because it's already zoned as single family, right? So um we have sold in the last six months single family house, and then square footage is about nineteen hundred square feet. So we're trying to get about. 10% close to that as possible. So we're at about 2250 square feet and under. And then we're going to look at the uh, comp. So I'm going to, you have to sort this by high to low because you're looking at the highest sold comp. So like what is worth after it's completely rehab fixed up. And you can see um, comp one here is 280. It's a frame. So this one's a frame at 280. Comp two is a brick, so we're not going to use that one. Uh, this one, could this be a frame? Let me see. It could be a frame, let me see. Hard to tell with the lighting. So sometimes you need to do like a Google drive-by and, and see the see the side of the house. Here's So the second highest frame is 249. And then right here, 247. You see that? You see how I'm not using the brick comps? So 280, 249, 247. So I got ARV around uh, 269, right? So ARV around 269. And uh, what we do is we enter um, the comps in here, right? 280, 249. And what was the other one? So of course this property sold like a few weeks ago and I think it took about like three weeks to close. So, you know, comps change every day. So um, when we did initially comp this property, we had 280, 249, 235, and then now it's uh, 280, so that's still there. 249, that's still there. And then it's actually higher, 247. So we would enter these three comps into our system and then it's going to give us, you know, you want to put your wholesale fee in here, what you want to make. We had uh, 17000 here. And you're going to see initially, like, the ARV price reductions at 70%. So 
you'll see like this is 78, right? We got it under contract, I think at like 50, 52, right? So why do we get under contract at 52? Is because um you want to check everything active on the market, like what's what's happening in this market. So if I'm an investor and I'm I'm trying to buy a single family home in this area to rehab, fix up and flip, can I buy a better deal than yours? Right. So if I'm about to make this offer at at uh 78 and I'm gonna try to sell this for seventeen thousand dollar wholesale fees, trying to sell it at um ninety-five thousand. Can an investor go in this market, find a frame house that's almost a gut rehab and cheaper than ninety eight thousand, right? So if they can, um, guess what? I need to be lower on my price, right? So what I'm going to do is go to look at all the actives, um, single family house. I'm going to look at. Uh, I do take the square footage off because if I see a a bigger house selling cheaper, I want to see what uh, I want to see that. And then I do zoom out to be about a mile radius. So in Redfin, the initial zoom is like two, three block radius. You zoom out once, it's about a half mile. Zoom out again. It's a little over a mile, um, but most of it, most of this is about a mile, right? So you can see here there's um two bedroom, one bath selling for 35. 52, 55, uh, 68. <clears throat> so, and you can see pictures of these, right? Like you can see the condition of them. Ours is a bit better condition than these properties. Um, so let me just stay in there right here, zoomed in uh, about, about a half mile radius. So right here is 52. This one, is my competition, right? So if an investor comes in the market, you know, this one may be a better deal than mine, right? And um, initially when looking at this deal, making the offer, um, maybe this one wasn't active yet, uh, like about a month ago, but we, we look at it and we see, hey, can an investor buy a cheaper deal, right? So in this scenario here, um, if both of our properties are in the same condition, same area, and this is almost the same size, obviously an investor would probably buy this one and not our deal, right? So in this scenario, I would need to be selling for maybe even 51, right? And you can see like how I have to adjust the um, ARV percentage down. I'm now down to like 50% or no, that's too much, 60%. 60% of ARV is 52, um, 55, even need to go lower. So let's say I want to sell at, I want to be the best deal on the market. So I want to sell at like 51 and I have it under contract for 39. So it's like a $12,000 wholesale fee here. Um, so you can see how it adjusts the ARV percentage adjusts based upon what I see on the market. Right. And, this deal here, I don't think this deal was on the market when we uh, initially sold this one. Let me see. Sell history. Yeah, they just listed this today. Um, not today, Um, September 9th. And we closed our deal like September 6th or 5th. So this was not on the market when we were initially doing our analysis, right? So vice versa, like if, if you see... um. So in this scenario, I had to adjust the ARV percentage down. But let's say you see you you look at everything active and um you're the your let's say that your all the actives are like at a hundred thousand, one hundred and twenty thousand, one hundred and thirty. Those are the cheapest actives an investor can buy. Um you you could change your ARV only upwards to 75% of ARV minus rehab. And I'm thinking that's like the highest they'll go as far as like uh, hard money lenders, private money lenders, 75% uh, of ARV minus rehab costs. And you can see the cash offer just went up to 91,000. And if I'm trying to get a $17,000 wholesale fee, I'm trying to sell at, you know, 108,000, right? And if I see everything, if I go back here and look at everything active on the market and I see the lowest active an investor can buy in this area is 110, 120, 130. I think that would be a good offer um, 
at even at 91 based upon what we see active on the market. So your ARV percentage is going to adjust based upon um, what you see on the market that an investor can go buy today. Like you, you to, to wholesale a deal um, and close in two weeks, three weeks and get paid, you, you need to ask yourself, you know, if I'm an investor going to this market, can I find a better deal? You know, and if they can, typically they're not going to buy your deal. They're going to buy the better deal that's, you know, that's out there, not your deal, right? So I need to be the best deal in the market, right? So in this scenario, um, in this case, um, we did get the deal under contract at uh, 50, 52, and we ended up selling it for 17. And uh, we ended up advertising this deal for, what was our advertising? Advertising it for 69. So we did sell it at our asking price. And it was um, uh, pretty fast closing. And at the time, I think that, 69 like the, the i think the cheapest active deal was probably like 69 70 thousand so we were just right below the cheapest deal on the market that we can find because this one's brand new it was just it was just put on the market that one so that's how we analyzed it that's how we found it so absentee owner list we use deal machine um we uh we analyzed it using our CRM and just using um, our, our just using common sense, right? You, you are using common sense where you're just like, hey, if I'm an investor, can I go buy a cheaper deal, right? And I, I need to, I need to change my offer based upon what other deals are out there, right? How we got the contract signed. So I had a partner in Arizona. He's good on the phones and he just, he got this deal signed virtually, sent the team out. So once the deal was signed, we just send you know, we just pay people, you can pay people like a hundred bucks or 75 bucks, go get pictures, go get video of the property. And we sold the deal through um, our email list. How we sold the deal was just our already established email list. I think we are, we have maybe 30,000 plus in the Chicago market on our email list, as far as uh, investors, buyers, realtors that we email out deals to. So how can you repeat this over and over again? Um, very simple. I mean, like there's lots of websites out there. Um, Deal Machine is what we're using now. Uh, we like it because um, leads are already skip traced with phone numbers. Um, you can use uh, free websites like uh, PropWire. PropWire.com is a free website. And you can go into the zip code you want to target. I think the zip code was uh, Inglewood 60636. And you can go to uh, lead type absentee owners, and then boom, you have the absentee owner list in six hundred three six three six. And you, you know, in PropR, this is a free website, so they don't have skip trace phone numbers. Uh, so you can use PropWire, and um, of course, you have to log in. It gives you the owners. It will give you the owner's uh, name and their address. Then once you have the owner's name and the address, you're going to do the same thing I did earlier, true people search, and then you're going to call, right? Call, text, email. Um, let me see if I can log in here. I haven't been on PropWire in a while. No. Nope. So typically the owner's name and their address will be here. You just have to register, log in, it's free, and then use true people search put their name in, their address, their uh, mailing address, and then you can get their phone numbers and call them. So that's how you can duplicate this. You're just, you know, and it, it is a grind. It's not easy. Um, you know, we, we have um, uh, people that all day long, their eight hour, their whole eight hour days, calls, texts, emails, finding deals, finding properties that we can wholesale, that we can list, that we can turn into Airbnb or rent to own. So all day long, eight hours a day, they're just calling, texting, email, right? And it, it is a grind. It is, um, you know, does take work, energy, effort, and it's not, uh, it's not easy. You got to go through thirty rejections, probably more, if you're brand new, to get one deal under contract, and it's 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 a, a daily grind, right? So, um.
so that's how you can repeat this success that we had. Use prop wires free or uh, deal machine. Our members we get deal machine um, that are part of our group and just calling, texting, emailing, just being consistent, right? Like every day I do marketing. I call people every day. I, You know, it's like you take a shower every day, you brush your teeth every day, you call people every day to see if they want to offer on their house. It has to be a daily, consistent, uh, nonstop where you're always making offers, you're always talking to sellers, you're always talking to people, right? And what's good about this business is that one day, you know, you talk to enough people where you build the Rolodex of people that know who you are. And uh, one day, you know, everyone knows who you are and all of a sudden... You know, you, you're starting to get, getting deals in your inbox and you're not having to chase the deals anymore because of what you did today. Right. You, you put in the effort today. You contacted um, maybe you started today, six months, a year from now, you contact you made thousand, you know, a thousand offers. So a thousand people know who you are now. And all of a sudden you start getting deals in your inbox. Um, people just sending you deals because they know who you are. They know what you do. And uh, that's when the business gets simpler and simpler is like when you just wake up and you got 20, 30 deals to look at. Right. And <clears throat> that's my inbox all day long. Like I literally looked at, we literally <clears throat> made like 30 offers today and all those offers just came from someone sent me an email, whether it was a student, whether it was uh, one of our VAs that we hired that had got a deal. Um, and they just sent us an email with the deal. We look at it, we analyze it, we, we send the offers and we're not eventually eventually you don't have to chase leads like that anymore they're coming to you right so that's the beauty about this business right so um we need mentorship handholding dinamariacademy.com uh we give deal machine to our team to people that join we give uh of course unlimited skip trace leads support uh if you need funding for double closings uh, funding for wholetailing, funding to take down properties. We, uh, if deal makes sense, we, we have the funding as well. And go to Kingdom Army Academy. It's just like a 90 minute presentation, just going over how it works. And we give you our CRM that we just showed you and how to analyze deals uh, quickly. And um, I didn't even show, like, this is um, also, it comes up with the, uh, rent to own offers and uh if you're a realtor and doing you want to do regular listings it, it tells you like about what price you should uh the full retail price of what it could possibly sell for so the listing offer so if you save this in here it has a, a script that you can follow when you're making your offers to the owner and and uh we have the, the of course the wholesale offer the cash offer where you you get you know you you get paid after closing ones you have the rent to own offer or that can be the owner finance offer rent to own assignment where you're just getting a down payment the straight option where it's or you it can be a listing or what they call novations now out there that people are doing that uh, nationwide where they're listing properties doing novations or partner on Airbnb and what we what I like to do is is um. It's transact like wholesaling is transactional, listings are transactional. You 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 close a deal, you get paid once, right? But at the same time, you should be picking up cash flowing properties. Like we pick up rent to owns where we turn around and maybe turn them into an Airbnb, or we just rent to own it someone else and cash flow it. We pick up uh Airbnb management deals where we just uh manage the Airbnb for the owner and cash flow it. So at the same time, where yeah, you can close three, four, five deals a month, wholesaling or listings and make good money. But after those five deals are done, you got to keep finding five more, right? And it keeps going. The process just keeps going and going. But if you can pick up cash flowing properties, right? Let's say that you picked up 10, 12 cash flowing properties a year from now. And those 10 or 12 properties are making 10 grand a month. Guess what? You don't, you're not worried about your next wholesale or your next listing because you, you, uh, you have enough cash flow coming in and you're not worried about hustling for that next deal and you're not stressed anymore, right? So that's kind of like the, the <clears throat> my, you know, we created this CRM ourselves and th that's just kind of a, our mindset when we built the whole thing, right?
and that's the goal. Like, if I don't have to close a deal this month, if I don't want to close a deal this month, I don't have to. I can just take the whole month off, and I have the cash flow from all the Airbnbs and the rent to owns that you know I don't have to hustle to close a listing or hustle to close a wholesale deal because um everything's taken care. Of, you know, all the cash flow is taken care of, all the bills and I have, uh, you have more on top of that. Right. So imagine you start now, you got, you know, 12 properties and all of a sudden you got 10,000 a month in cash flow. You know, that's, that's where you want to be where I don't have to close a wholesale or a listing. Um, I, you know, I can take the whole month off, go on vacation. Right. So check that out. Um, so we're going to do our membership group meeting in what time is it? In 30 minutes from now in the kingdom RI group. So if you guys are interested in that, we do have uh, every two weeks right now, we're doing a meeting here that's free and then the media and Kingdom Maria Academy where we're just going over um, uh, in more depth, you know, in more detail. We're cold calling leads live and stuff like that. But I like to end with uh, always reading scripture, the word of God. First and foremost, the word of God is all about the gospel, about believing in Jesus, repenting of your sins, turning from your sins, believing in God. And God says, if you just confess me with your mouth, believe in your heart, you will have eternal life. And then second of all, the Bible is, I think, the greatest book ever written on how to do life, how to be a leader, how to have a good business, how to have great everything, right? How to have a great marriage, how to have, and this is a, a real estate investing Facebook group. So I, I always try to relate it to, to business, right? To real estate. So so um, what happened with me is that I started reading the Bible and just like started applying biblical principles into my business, like stuff like, hey, Romans, it says, oh, no, man, nothing but to love them. So I started getting out of debt and I just started applying biblical principles and everything I do. And all of a sudden, you know, 10 million in debt paid off, uh, paid in full. And uh, I, I give all the glory to God from just obeying him. Right. And so Matthew 6, 19, it talks about the true treasure of wealth. It says, do not store up your yourselves treasures on earth where moss and rust destroy, where thieves break into steel, but store up yourselves for treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in or steal. All right. So on this in this world, everything that we accumulate here eventually is going to be destroyed. The Bible says everything on the earth is eventually going to be demolished and destroyed so you know why are you worried so much about accumulating so much stuff here when your mindset should be on accumulating uh wealth in heaven and what does that mean uh wealth in heaven um it it means the, the main thing it means is like bringing people with you like is in heaven it's all going to be all about you know, Jesus, God, and other people, like other people that you brought with you, that you saved, you you brought to salvation, right? And that's why I do this stuff. Like this world doesn't matter. It's the next world that matters. It's the next, it's 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 after we're gone that matters. It's, it's what you did here. Like Jesus says, um, uh, when you come to him and you believe in faith, He, the Bible says he wipes away all your sins and he doesn't even remember any of your sins anymore. And when we do pass away, the Bible says that we will stand in front of Jesus and be judged. But he says, I'm not going to judge you for any of your sins because I wipe them away. What I am going to judge you for is for your good deeds, what you did here on this earth. So God is going to judge you based upon what you do with your money, what you do with your wealth, what you do with your time, uh, but for good, right? So 21, it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be and that's true like wherever you put your money wherever you put your money and your time that's where your heart is right like you put all your 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 time into watching sports your heart's there right you're always watching the game you're always like involved and, and want to see what's going on. if you put all your money and time wherever you put all your money and time that's where your your heart's going to be right the eye of the lamp of the the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light that's in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Right. And and that's the thing, like the, the Bible says over and over again, like 
your eyes are the gateway to to doing good, doing evil. Like what you see, uh, what you see on your phone, what you see on TV, what you what you see, your eyes become the gateway of for everything. Like the reason you you do bad or you sin or you do wrong is because I saw it first with my eyes, right? And all of a sudden, uh, I'm doing something I don't want to do, right? And and the Bible says that your eyes are uh the gateway to your soul to 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 inside of you and then 24 says no one can serve two masters for he for either he will hate the one love the other he be devoted to one and despise the other you cannot serve god and wealth or it says god and uh money basically you, so you can't serve both so it's either you you know you can't love money with all your heart and then love god with all your heart right and then my story i used to um I literally used to work 16 hour days. Um, money was my God. Like I wanted to make more money no matter what the cost. I would be okay telling half truths, lying. Uh, I'd be okay just, uh, uh, you know, whatever I did, had to do to make money as long as it was legal, I'll do it, right? That's that's because God, my God was money, right? And then fast forward today, like I don't, I maybe work four hours in the day. I work from like, I try to work from like 1030 to 230. And, you know, I'm not a slave to money anymore. Like, like before, like I literally, I, I abandoned my health because of money. Um, I didn't work out anymore. I didn't take care of myself anymore. I gained like 80 plus pounds from where I'm at now. I abandoned uh, my family, talking to friends, family, you know, I had no, social life because all I did was work 16 hour days because I had to make more money. Right. And, uh, uh, so I abandoned my health, I abandoned family, friends, and it was just all about working on wealth, accumulating money, money, money. And I realized it's like, man, this is not worth living. Like, like why, why am I wake? I wake up at the moment I wake up, I'm working to the one o'clock in the morning, I'm still working like 16 hour work days. Right. So all day I'm working, even I, you know, while, while I'm taking a lunch break, I'm eating while I'm working. Right. And, and that's not the way to live life. Right. Like, uh, I have some notes here. So your treasure should not be focused on this life, but the next life. Um, and that's what the beauty about the Bible is like, the Bible is always about focused on heaven, like focus on the next life, right? And I, I believe we can take that concept and apply that to all aspects of our life. Um, yes, focus on heaven. That keeps you obedient to God, keeps you obedient to his word, keeps you obedient to who he is. Uh, but at the same time, um, uh, in business, for example, let's say that you, you write down your goal and, I'm, you know, my goal is, ten thousand dollars a month and just cash flow not wholesale deals not listings but cash flow from rental property from rent to homes from airbnbs and that's 12 months from now that's my and then if you always focus on that goal you eventually you're always thinking about it you're always uh it's always in your mind it's always on on uh on uh things that books you're reading things you're hearing because you're playing youtube videos about how to get there you're reading books about how to get there you're seeing uh, YouTube videos on how to get there. So it it becomes, you become focused on your goal, right? Um, so I think we can apply this where you're always focused on heaven. You're always focused on your goals as well in this life. Like you're always focused on like, man, my end goal is 10 grand a month, 12 months from now. So what am, how am I going to get there? What's the steps? I got to consistently always be making offers, always talking to landlords, always talking to sellers, always making uh, offers every single day, right? If you keep your eyes focused on your end goal, um, you're going to make it. But if you're jumping around, like, uh, for example, you're focused on heaven and all of a sudden you're focused on, oh, I want to go and to the club or strip club or this and that. And all of a sudden I'm off doing something else, right? And now you fell off, right? And that's this very similar, same thing to business is like, People join and then they are excited and they uh, like a lot of students join, they're excited and they're all pumped up. And all of a sudden they see someone else's program like, oh, that's a better one. Right. That shiny object over there. Oh, and they see something else is better or see something else is better. And all of a sudden they're just three years later, they're just going in the circle and they're always just doing the same thing and, and never getting hitting your goal. Right. 
And I think that's the same for like, uh, for us uh, as well as uh, as far as keeping our eyes on heaven. So sin start with your eyes and what you see. So keep your eyes clean, right? Like for me, I used to be, I, I'm pretty open about this. I used to be addicted to pornography, right? Like my whole life, I was from like eight years old, nine years old, not, not that young, maybe like 10 years old, all the way up to like, I'm 40, I'm 38 now, all the way up to like 30 years old, right? I was addicted. And the only way I got out of that addiction was I kept my eyes clean, right? Like I stopped scrolling on Instagram, on Facebook. I, you know, I, uh, I did things that, for example, I'll keep, I would keep all my windows open, right? And I wouldn't, I would make sure I'm not alone by myself in a room where I could start watching that stuff, right? Um, so the Bible says the sin starts with your eyes. So keep your eyes clean. And if you keep your eyes clean and the same thing with like, um, I can, I think how we apply this to business is like, you got to keep your eyes on your, on your goals. Like, like if you really, really, really want to get out of your job, if you really, if it's really something you really want to make 10, 20 grand a month cash flow, you need to read, you need to have your eyes glued on books about how to get there you need to have your eyes glued on youtube videos where you see it all the time where you hear it all the time on podcasts that people actually are successfully closing deals and you need to always be hearing it like man all these people like if you if you pursue it you find it you seek it it's like you'll find it right like there's literally like thousands of podcasts out there with people always talking about how all the deals that they're closing right and that will motivate you to keep on course, right? To keep track on your goals, right? And then the Bible says, you cannot serve God and money. And again, my story was that I would do anything for money. I would, you know, work work and not see any family for money. I would ruin relationships for money. I didn't care, you know, if I made more money, I didn't care if I stopped talking to a best friend. I, you know, so... Do and the Bible is the opposite, right? The Bible talks about righteous wealth and unrighteous wealth. So the Bible is more so of like focused on uh people first, right? Whereas uh the world focuses on money first. That was me. Money first, uh getting more bigger houses, nicer cars, nicer vacations. That was my my number one goal, right? And and then versus righteous wealth, which, which God wants you to be, is like you focus on uh, people, loving people, serving people, giving to people. And then at the bottom of that is money, right? Like I, I like to, um, uh, I don't have my notepad, but get a notepad out and then like righteous wealth. First thing you focus on is serving people, loving people, giving to people. And then at the bottom of that, your goals is like, money right a byproduct of loving people serving people will be money right and unfortunately like we see in the world like for example just you know mcdonald's for example they're probably killing more people than anybody right and with their food you know and guess what they have unrighteous wealth right they're they're you know the devil is giving them billions and billions of dollars and they're killing people left and right causing so many health problems I would say that's unrighteous wealth. Like same thing with like, you know, drug dealers, you know, they make a lot of money, but it's unrighteous wealth, right? Uh, righteous wealth is when you have something where it's, you have a product, a service where you're actually giving, helping people, serving people. And I believe you can do that in this business, um, especially uh, uh, when you learn not, you know, when you learn like, hey, it's not just, uh, I have to lowball everyone and try to get a wholesale deal and try to get as low as possible so I can make the most money. But I think in this business, like when you learn creative strategies like rent to own, you can do owner finance or learn straight options or learn how to uh, do management deals where you cash flow deals. Um, when you learn that, you can help almost anybody that comes across your table. It doesn't matter their equity on it, right? And I believe um, uh, in this business, it's more about 
like your success is more about how you build your um your long term success is more so about how you build your relationships today right like uh <clears throat> like uh if you if you create a you, like every seller that we talk to or i always say every seller that you talk to you should try to build so much rapport with them that they become a friend and then and and uh they hopefully refer you business in the future right like you like you serve you serve them you give so much to them you help them so much as you as much as you can and you do such a good job that they tell other people about it right and um from looking back the reason why you know a lot of people are out of this business and i'm still here like 15 years later i think it's because of all uh, relationships i built right like i have uh people like this deal here i think that we talked about today was from a guy that we um we uh i think closed our first deal with him like six like maybe five years ago six years ago and we're still closing deals with him uh because we we serve we know and we're friends like we we talk all the time we're friends we i think like once every few months we talk and just catch up and see how everything's going and that's what you want you want in this business um one relationship could lead to 20 deals 30 deals 40 deals uh, i i think the most i have with one relationship is probably like 50 plus deals with one person and you know times that by 5000 you're talking about hundreds of thousands in profit just from one relationship with one person right and that's what you want to do is is um focus on building relationships right and that's what i believe righteous wealth what the Bible talks about is going out there, being a servant, helping people, no matter, no matter uh, uh, how hard it is or how tired you are, you just keep, you just keep coming. You just keep serving. You just keep giving. You just keep loving them. You just keep serving them. And, and uh, if you do that in this, in business, especially this business, people will just send you deals like, like in your inbox, like, like, like I, like I said, I wake up, I have like 30 plus deals to look at and yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm busy in the morning, but, um, I didn't have to go chase those deals. I have to run them down. They came to me because I helped someone and they, 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 they like doing business with us because of how, how we, we serve them and help them. Right. So build relationships, help people, serve people, give, and, um, and the only way to, um, get out there and do that is like just talking to people, right? Call as many people as you can every day, try to make offers every day and, and get people to know what you do every day, right? So if you guys have any questions, just reach out. This is my number, my email. And in the in the other group, we're going to go and uh, call leads live on the absentee owner list, see if we get somebody uh, live using Deal Machine and hopefully uh, uh, we can use that we can uh, uh, get get another deal the same way we got this one. So if you guys have any questions, you can reach out. Um, no questions in the comments. Reach out, reach out to us if you have any questions, email, text, call. And uh, God bless. We hope you guys got a lot of audit today. Okay.